Welcome to Alimentary, the podcast series where you'll not only learn about your amazing body, how it works, and of course why food is so important, but also pick up some simple recipes and lifestyle tips and tweaks, which will help you to influence your health in a positive way. When we have our bloods taken, there are a few markers of health that we are particularly aware of and that we might discuss with our doctor. And one of those is our cholesterol level. It would certainly be noted if our cholesterol level was high. Um, but I've often been asked, you know, what is high? What's low? Um, and actually, how can we influence our own level ourselves? So people with high cholesterol are often prescribed a medication called a statin. And more and more GPs are now recommending lifestyle changes as a first port of call, which is great for overall health as well. So in this episode of Elementary, I'm going to give you some information about much maligned and talked about cholesterol. And what is it, why it is important and how we can use diet and exercise to regulate it and maintain a healthy level. So what is cholesterol? Well, it's a fat-like substance, which is an important constituent of our body cells because it's, a, it's like a building block for our cell membranes. It's necessary for the formation of hormones and bile salts. So essentially it's a raw material for hormones, which are chemical messengers, which signal and instigate many reactions and actions in our bodies. Bile salts also make it easier for our body to digest and use the fats and fat-soluble vitamins that we eat. So according to Harvard Health, it is vital, that is cholesterol, is vital to our health and well-being. Cholesterol in our blood is made by, about 80% of it is made by our liver and about 20% can be absorbed directly from cholesterol-rich foods. So when we talk about a high cholesterol level, um, what numbers are we, are we talking about there? So according to the Irish Heart Foundation, these are the current recommended numbers. So we're it's recommended uh, that our cholesterol level is not greater than 5 mmol per litre. But that is made up of three. So we have our HDL, which is our high density lipoprotein, and that's considered to be our good cholesterol. And that should be higher than 1 mmol per litre. Then we have our LDL, which is our bad cholesterol, and that should be less than 3 mmol per litre. And then the third thing is triglycerides. And they're like, you know, the amount of fat that's traveling around in our blood. And that should be less than 2 mmol per litre. So if your cholesterol reading is 5.1 to 6.2 mmol per litre, then that's considered borderline high. If it's higher than 6.2 mmol per litre, that is considered high. Now, for people who have established heart disease or even diabetes, um, you know, your doctor might be looking for your total cholesterol level to be no more than 4.5 and your LDL to be no more, that's the, that's the, the bad cholesterol to be no more than 2.5 mmol per litre. So I'll put a link to the Irish Heart Foundation in the show notes, you know, where you can, you can uh, have a look at those. So why is high blood cholesterol a health risk? So it can increase the risk of atherosclerosis. And this is the accumulation of cholesterol and lipids on the wall of our arteries. And this causes them to narrow, of course. So that's like taking away, you know, a lane on a motorway or something. It's just going to impact the flow of our blood. And this increases the risk of coronary artery disease or stroke. So our liver is also responsible for metabolizing and breaking down cholesterol. So it's really important that we keep our liver healthy in order to manage our cholesterol levels as well. And just to mention that the, uh, the bad cholesterol or the LDLs, which you'll see on your blood test results, that's a risk factor. If that's too high, it's a risk factor for these conditions. While our good cholesterol or HDL, uh, it does seem to protect against arterial disease. If your LDL cholesterol is high and lifestyle changes do not work, then you might be prescribed a statin by your GP. And statins help to lower LDL by inhibiting um, the production of cholesterol. Now, a byproduct of that, obviously, when we're on medications, you know, for a, a long time, you know, there can be uh, side effects or, or other impacts. And a sort of, I guess, a result of inhibiting the cholesterol production also inhibits um, production of CoQ10. And coenzyme Q10 is an antioxidant that our body makes naturally. Our cells use CoQ10 for growth and maintenance. And it's, um, it's a really powerful antioxidant, which which, which protects 
are and supports our mitochondria and our mitochondria are they're like the little power pack or battery in every single one of our cells so it's really important for at, at a really basic level it's really important to support mitochondrial health so we need coq10 for that uh, coq10 really helps to to produce energy you know um so the energy that's available to the tissue decreases and remember our organs are made up of tissue you know so really important that we we support that so if you're on a statin long term you would never ever come off medication without the support and guidance of your gp but if you would like to support that mitochondrial health, then talk to your GP about supplementing with CoQ10. But talk to your doctor when, when it comes to supplementation, talk to your doctor or healthcare provider. And as I say, never, you know, come off medication by yourself. You know, always do it with, with the help and guidance of your doctor. And obviously in the case of high cholesterol, you know, it would be in conjunction with certain lifestyle changes, which will hope, hopefully decrease your, um, your cholesterol reading naturally. Lifestyle changes are definitely the best long term solution. And um, so really, you know, maintaining your your healthy cholesterol level is, is the goal. So how does our cholesterol level get too high? And really, the, the main things are diet, weight, hereditary issues and conditions such as diabetes, mellitus. They can all influence our blood cholesterol levels. But the good news is that a healthy diet and adequate exercise can lower cholesterol. So the, the four main points to, to remember um, is to increase your fiber intake and fiber is our whole grains and our vegetables. Increase omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory and omega-3, um, we're talking about oily fish. So that's like salmon, mackerel, sardines. I know not a lot of people are mad about sardines, but uh, and I uh, go through phases with them myself, but actually they're quite nice mashed up with some uh, cucumber diced really small and some peppers and a little bit of mayo. They're a very good source of calcium as well, you know, with all the little bones. So, you know, you can try them for sure. They're a um, handy little snack as well. Now, there are plant sources of omega-3 as well, like uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts. Um, Oily fish twice a week would be what's recommended. If you absolutely will not eat fish, then make sure you're getting some plant sources of omega-3 um, every day. So we need to reduce or eliminate processed foods because they uh, put pressure. We mentioned the liver is important in managing our cholesterol and processed foods put a lot of pressure on our liver, you know. So um, there's that and also the fact that they contain a lot of trans fats, you know, which generally do not influence our cholesterol in a positive way. So increasing exercise is another uh, good way to support our healthy cholesterol levels. And even a 20 to 30 minute brisk walk every day can make a difference. Um, you know, so you don't have to, to if you enjoy the gym, brilliant. But um, as I said, even a 20 to 30 minute just brisk walk every day, you know, is going to really support your health overall as well. So what can we do in practical terms when it comes to sort of planning our meals around maintaining a healthy cholesterol level or, or trying to reduce our, our cholesterol? And um, so I'm going to just go through some general guidelines meal by meal. Um, but if you have any particular uh, health issues or special dietary requirements, you know, it's always good to get a personalized plan and get some get some help um, as well. So these are just some general guidelines. So we start off with breakfast. Oats are a super source. They're high in fiber and they're whole grain. And actually remember fiber, it doesn't just help us to lower cholesterol. It also helps us to avoid issues like colon cancer. You know, so we want to make sure that our digestive tract is always working well. Um, oats are a super source of a fiber called beta-glucan. And they also provide B vitamins um, that, that supports our central nervous system. You can add some flax seeds to your porridge. And so flax seeds are going to add protein because we want to have a little bit of protein with every meal. So add like a, a dessert spoon or a tablespoon of flax seeds and you'll also get some omega-3 and um, obviously fiber in those too. Berries add antioxidants and various different vitamins and minerals as well. And obviously antioxidants help prevent free radical damage to our cells. So if you don't like porridge, there are like a zillion recipes out there for things like overnight oats and you can make them up with any flavor that you like, you know. So uh, pretty much with the same principles, though, adding in some seeds for some protein and some some berries. I have a recipe for uh, chia pudding on my website, so I'll put a link to that in the show notes, too. 
So when it comes to your lunch, now we want to, um, like meat, um, we, on, we only need to eat meat once a day. You know, we don't certainly need to eat it two or three times a day. So for lunch, you could swap out your meat and add in things like um, legumes, which are a super source of fiber. So things like chickpeas, lentils, um, mixed beans, and chickpeas are actually really handy and convenient as well. If you buy them in tins, you want to make sure that you wash them and rinse them really, really well. Um, but again, they're ready cooked and so very convenient and a great source of fiber and protein. So mixed bean salad, um, chickpeas with quinoa, you know, some great options for, for lunches there. Now, I actually will also add lentils or chickpeas when I'm making soup. So that's adding protein into, into your, you know, vegetable soup. So for example, um, with the sweet potato, carrot and butternut squash soup, I'll add red lentils. With the broccoli soup, I'll add green lentils. And with uh, cauliflower soup, I add in chickpeas, you know. So they're, they're very handy to have. Um, and as I said, they add good protein and fiber to, to, your, to your lunch. Omelettes are a good idea. You know, um, you can have them, uh, obviously cook them with, with quick uh, cooking vegetables like peppers and courgettes. And uh, maybe spinach as well is lovely, you know, so that's a, another very, very handy uh, lunch. When it comes to your dinner, so we mentioned, you know, reducing your meat. Uh, if you eat meat, you know, reduce it to like once a day. And obviously leaner cuts are better. Um, don't eat any fat or skin. And, you know, avoid or minimize pork. You know, if you want to eat pork, make sure it's like a pork chop. Um, and avoid rashers and sausages. Your plate should be half full of vegetables. So that's where you get all your good fiber and make sure that they're different colors. And that all that fiber is going to escort the LDL, the bad cholesterol out of our blood. So we want a, a quarter plate protein and a quarter plate carbs. So ideally your carbs, especially if your cholesterol is high, you know, brown rice would be a great option uh, for your carb at dinner time. If you're having potatoes, leave the skins on because that's more fiber. And again, you could add in if you're having like, you know, curries, um, stir fries, you could add in things like chickpeas and, uh, you know, beans, cannelloni beans, different things like that, you know. So we also do want healthy fat on our plate. So like a tablespoon of olive oil, you know, in your salad dressing or, you know, if you can have dairy, then a grass fed butter, you know, a little grass fed butter is fine. But we need fat in our diet because um, we there are four really all our vitamins and minerals are important, but vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble vitamins, all really important for things like immune support, for bone health. So we need some good healthy fat in our diet. So that's your, as I said, your grass fed butter, your olive oil, you know, nuts and seeds, avocado, you know, so really good healthy fat is important as well. So for snacks, you could make your own little trail mix. So if you buy some good organic, you know, nuts and seeds and uh, pop a couple of each into a little jar to bring with you. And um, if you're having a piece of fruit, have a couple of nuts and seeds with them. So when it comes to fruit, um, apples, grapes, strawberries, lemons, limes, they all have antioxidants. So again, prevent free radical damage, but they have pectin, which helps to lower cholesterol. Pectin, so again, good for the liver. And the liver helps to metabolize the cholesterol, uh, really good for a detox. And pectin is actually also good for gut lining as well. So, you know, these old sayings like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. You know, they're, they've are they been around for a long time for a reason. So, um, yeah, so definitely th those fruits would, would be good to include. But have some little nuts or seeds whenever you're having a piece of fruit as well. Bananas are also beneficial. So you've probably seen some products advertised as helping to support lowering cholesterol and um, because they have plant sterols and stanols and two grams of plant sterols or stanols a day can lower LDL cholesterol by about 10 percent so this is you know substantial and the recommended at the moment is about seven to nine portions of fruit and veg mostly veg per day now one portion is the size of your fist or a half a cup of berries now what I would say to you is if you only are having one portion of vegetables every day at the moment, you want to build that up slowly. So don't go straight to having seven to nine portions because that's going to be hard on your digestive system. So definitely build up your build up an extra portion every week and, and get it up that way. Do it do it sort of slowly and steadily. 
you really need to avoid white flour, you know, so cut out your cakes, white bread, biscuits. Um, they do contain trans fats as well. And, you know, when people talk about eggs and cholesterol, uh, they were kind of vilified there for a number of years. Eggs do, in the, the yolk and eggs contain good cholesterol. So, and they also help to regulate cholesterol. And um, as I said, the yolk contains good cholesterol. It also has B12, choline, you know, a number of other really beneficial nutrients. So you definitely don't need to exclude them from your diet. Um, other tips would be to avoid excess caffeine. Um, and make sure that you have some good extra virgin cold pressed olive oil in your salads. Add a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper to your salads. And um, carrots are also really good for snacking on and helping to lower cholesterol. So I'll pop some links to some studies in the show notes as well, in case you'd like to read some more up about it. But hopefully there's enough information for you there to just encourage you that you can, you know, before you get to the stage where your cholesterol is so high that you're, you're prescribed a statin, which is going to, you know, impact your CoQ10 and your mitochondrial health, you know, why not make sure that um, just incorporating these uh, principles into your diet are going to not only help your cholesterol levels, but actually. So today's store cupboard staple is chickpeas. So I've chosen these because they're a great source of protein and fiber. And obviously the fiber is super important when it comes to making sure that we're regulating our cholesterol and make sure it doesn't get too high. So what are they if you haven't tasted them before? Well, chickpeas are a type of legume. So legumes are generally chickpeas, beans, lentils. Um, so they're, they're actually in the same family as kidney beans and peanuts. And you might he hear them referred to as garbanzo beans as well. So they kind of have a buttery and um, nutty flavor. And, you know, when you, um, I would put them into soups into, if I was making like a white soup, I would add in some chickpeas and they actually add a lovely creamy texture to it. So they help to control blood sugar because obviously of the protein and the fiber. And remember, protein and fiber both help to slow down the release of glucose into our blood. Um, so, so for that reason, they have, you know, if you're looking for low GI, low glycemic index foods, um, you know, they, they're, they're great for that. Um, they're also absorbed and digested slowly. And um, they have a type of starch that, that actually digests slowly called amylose. So these are all things which help to keep our blood sugar from going up too fast. So, you know, if someone is diabetic, they're a great, um, great food to include in their diet. So again, that fabulous fiber in chickpeas um, really helps with digestion. And um, it, chickpeas have a soluble fiber. We, met, we mentioned earlier that oats have beta glucans. Well, the fiber in chickpeas is called raffinose. And so the, the good bacteria in our gut breaks it down so that the colon can, can, digest, um, can digest it slowly. So having uh, plenty of sources of, of great fiber in our diet, you know, just obviously helps with our digestion and bowel movements and regularity. So the, again, the, we mentioned earlier that fiber is great for managing our cholesterol. So um, it really helps to lower our bad cholesterol, our LDL. And um, obviously, as, as we mentioned, then this can reduce our risk of heart disease. Another, I suppose, chemical byproduct of uh, eating chickpeas is that our body makes a short chain fatty acid um, called butyrate. And um, this has been shown in studies to help um, eliminate and detoxify our system from from uh, dying cells, you know, and sick cells, you know. So this this can help to lower our risk for colorectal cancer as well. So it may have, they may have, so chickpeas may have other cancer fighting com compounds too, like lycopenes and saponins. So they help to give us stronger bones because um, cal uh, chickpeas and other legumes have calcium, magnesium, um, the fiber and other nutrients that we need for our strong bones. Um, now it is important if you, especially if you buy um, the hard chickpeas, you know, that, that are uncooked, um, you must soak them before you actually cook them. And this can actually reduce the phytates and phytates can just kind of bind the nutrients. So um, when those phytates are released, it's much easier for our body to actually absorb and use the nutrients. So chickpeas actually also contain choline and choline is a B vitamin. Um, it's a nutrient that helps to make important chemicals that, that, you know, support our memory, our muscle control, our mood and other brain and central nervous system functions. Now, if you buy your chickpeas in a can, in a tin, make sure that you rinse them really well before, before you use them. Um, it will reduce flatulence. 
So what can we do with chickpeas um, once we do stock them in our store cupboard? Well, there's several ways that we can include them in our diet. So I would actually always add them to, if I was making a white soup, you know, so like cauliflower soup, I would add, um, I would add chickpeas and they just add protein uh, to the soup and make it actually lovely and creamy as well. Um, I would add them to salads, so particularly a quinoa salad. Um, so again, just adding a great source of protein and fiber. So if you cook up some vegetables, you can toss some chickpeas in through through some greens. You can make hummus with chickpeas and that can be fantastic for a snack, you know, so you can dip your, your vegetable sticks into the hummus or um, put it on an oat cake. And again, it's adding protein to your snack. You can add chickpeas to curries, to stews. Uh, stir fries and um, also you can make some little lovely uh, snacks by spread a layer of chickpeas on a baking sheet and add whatever seasonings you like so whether it's a curry flavor or whether it's paprika uh, anything like that whatever you fancy and uh, just roast them until they're golden and crunchy so they make a nice little snack when you're watching a movie so considering how nutrient dense and easy to include chickpeas are i hope you include them in your shop Thank you for listening to today's episode. I just wanted to clarify that the podcast is for informational purposes only and does not substitute professional care from a doctor or trained health professional, nor does it constitute medical advice or services if you're in a, in a position to need either. However, if you find it interesting, you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes or sign up for my newsletter on lynnsharkynutrition.ie.